Dismantle Israel and the entire U.S. Empire. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. More than 20 House Democrats joined Republicans in voting to censure Palestinian-American Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib on Tuesday for her comments supporting Palestinians against Israel's murderous assault on Gaza. Democrats were happy to have a Palestinian woman in Congress, until they found out she was the Palestinians-are-human-beings kind of Palestinian, and not the look-how-diverse-and-inclusive-Democrats-are kind. They're like, I was fine with the Palestinian woman until she started supporting the Palestinians. Did nobody tell her that her only job is to quietly pose for Instagram selfies with Nancy Pelosi? White House spokesman John Kirby has confirmed that the Biden administration is still drawing zero red lines with how Israel is permitted to use U.S.-supplied weapons in Gaza. Asked by the press on Tuesday if it is still the case that the administration is not drawing any red lines for Israel despite the soaring death toll in Gaza, Kirby replied, that is still the case. This is the same Biden administration who just days ago was telling the press that it is powerless to stop Israel from massacring civilians in Gaza, now telling us that they've made literally no effort to stop Israel from massacring civilians. It's a blatant case of... We've tried nothing, and we're all out of ideas. Israel has once again released an audio clip of what it claims is an intercepted Hamas phone call in order to rebuff accusations of war crimes, this time allegedly featuring a Hamas fighter boasting about how many ambulances he's able to use for transportation in response to criticisms of a deadly Israeli airstrike on an ambulance convoy. The last time Israel released such an audio file in an attempt to exonerate itself, language experts cited by the UK's Channel 4 News said the clip was not credible due to the language, accent, dialect, syntax, and tones in the clip. An audio analyst with an organization called Earshot found that this recording was manipulated and cannot be used as a credible source of evidence. This is also the very same government which claims its intelligence agencies had no idea what Hamas was up to in the lead-up to the October 7th attacks, now claiming it is constantly intercepting Hamas communications and has a whole archive of them that it can access whenever it needs to exonerate itself from accusations of war crimes. Bit odd, that. It is not just the Israeli state that has proven it needs to be dismantled. It's the entire U.S. centralized Western Empire. The whole giant power structure has got to go. Top reasons Americans are supporting the Gaza massacre right now. One, their favorite right-wing pundits told them to. Two, they hate Muslims. Three, they want a biblical prophecy to be fulfilled in which Jesus comes back and casts non-Christians into eternal hellfire. Four, Dopey partisan culture war bullshit. And five, the news media lied to them. Israel has a right to defend itself means genocide all non-Zionists. If pro-Israel people get to decide that from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free is a call to genocide Jews, then it's only fair that pro-Palestine people get to decide what pro-Israel people's slogans mean as well. Person in 1940. Nazi Germany must end. Other person in 1940. So you're saying you want to genocide the Germans? Schrodinger's ethnostate. Simultaneously A, the only place in the world where Jews can exist safely, and B, a poor little victim whose inhabitants are under constant threat from violent militants and hostile neighboring nations. The question, how can Israel destroy Hamas if there is a ceasefire, is infinitely less relevant and interesting than the question, how can Israel continue to exist as a Zionist ethnostate without apartheid and abuse and nonstop murder and endless warfare?